All right, so uh, we're here in Kona, and I'm with Captain Kenny, and we're uh, we're gonna go out fishing tomorrow, yeah? Exactly, I'm the vixen, 44 nice. foot unified vixen. Awesome. And what are we gonna catch? Well, we'll try for some Pacific blue marlin, yellowfin tuna, wahoo, and some dorado. Nice. Then we'll cook it up after we get done. And you're gonna show me some recipes, yeah? Exactly. All right. Hawaiian recipe. All right, so stay tuned. We're gonna you're gonna see. If Have we a Hawaiian luau. <laughs> right here on the culinary edge. Culinary edge. You know, fishermen are superstitious. Is there anything I shouldn't bring on the don't, boat? Whatever you do, don't bring bananas. 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 <laughs> Never Every bring fisherman. A banana. Do not bring yeah. bananas or fishing. Not, I'm going to eat it before you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we promise okay. you, you won't, bring, you no won't bananas. bring bananas. See you tomorrow. Okay, see you tomorrow. <laughs> Okay, I think I got I think I got it covered. No, you never seen it? Farewell and adieu to you, fair Spanish ladies. We're gonna catch something to eat, right, Captain? I hope so. Good luck, really. I'm teach you an object. We got him. Right on. Over here, you can see the it's a pot of spinner dolls. From the time I was five years old, I grew up fishing in a boat a lot smaller than this, uh, like a rowboat actually. And I was fishing on the Barnegat Bay. So I've always loved to catch fish, and I've always loved to eat fish. Have you ever read The Old Man in the Sea? Yes. Santiago. <laughs> yeah. Yep. My dad, my dad got a big 986 pound marlin on his outrigger. Oh yeah? Small little 18-foot outrigger. On an outrigger canoe, he got a, a thousand pound uh, marlin, huh? Yes. Wow. The old man in the sea for Hawaii. That's right. I don't know, it's a shark. Smart one, got under the boat. I think he's under the boat. He's either very smart or very dumb. So you eat the loco moco for breakfast, huh? Oh, that's a that's a breakfast of the champion. <laughs> what is it? It's a hamburger, hamburger gravy, rice, and and over easy eggs. Wow. It's called the loco moco. Very like good for your cholesterol. <laughs> Doctor recommended highly. <laughs> if you want to leave to be a hundred, loco moco is the answer. Captain, how how long is the longest you fought a fish for? Eight hours. What was it? One thousand two hundred fifty-eight and a half pounds. Wow. So this could be a this could be an eight-hour episode of the culinary edge. So stay tuned. Oh, drive yourself. <laughs> oh, drive yourself. <laughs> Very tough job, but somebody has to do it. Yeah, I know. You look off in the distance. That's Maui, beautiful island of Maui, or as we like to say, Bali High calls you. Beautiful fish. One thing on the culinary edge that we stress is that, you know, 
everything that we kill, we're going to eat. You don't kill anything that you're not going to eat. Uh, Indian Chuck knows spearfish. Better known as a uh, uh, chucker. Very good eating the meat is red and tender. Very good barbecue. We're going to have it for dinner tonight. So this is a sucker fish. He's stuck onto the uh, fish that we just caught. Look at that sponge. In some places, these are delicacies. We're gonna eat them tonight. No, actually, we're not. Just, just really interesting. And the buoy behind me is has actually about 4,000, 5,000 feet of chain that goes down to the bottom. It's so deep here, it's like 5,000 feet. And what happens is the fish, the little bait fish gets stuck in the little net next to the uh, chain, and then the fish eat, smaller fish eat that, and then the bigger fish like the tuna and the marlin eat them. So there's a whole ecosystem just around that small little buoy. Oh, something, something bit your oh, thing in half. Check yeah. that out. Oh, yeah. Wow. Look what? at that. Oh, oh look what at that. that? Okay. Let's wow. song go again. Where have all the fish is gone? And how does he go now? <laughs> so graveyard. Graveyard. Where have all the fish is gone? How does the fish go now? <laughs> Forgot the words, huh, Captain? Forgot the words. Sure, <laughs> into the graveyard. <laughs> huh? No, it's all right. Working for people that doesn't know how to fish. Yeah. Get me to. I'm gonna have a big one. Be careful, man. It's gonna have to be very short. Fast. <laughs> Sometimes when you're fishing, there's this like real quiet time. Where there's nothing going on. There's no fish biting. And uh, I don't know, there's something really peaceful about it. And also thrilling. Like something is about to happen. That's a marlin. Yeah, I get in. Oh. Wow. Dude, holy shit. <laughs> holy shit. That's only 150 pounds? Oh my yeah. god. Wow. So it's interesting because uh, when I read Old Man in the Sea, when I was in grade school, there's the part where he talks about the fish and he kind of regrets killing the fish a little bit. And I kind of know what he means because as a fisherman, I've always had to deal with the idea that when you catch a fish, you kill it, the idea of death. And I think as we become more divorced from our food supply, people don't feel the, the real feeling it is to kill an animal, to have an animal give up its life for you to eat. And I think that's a real part of being human. 
being connected to the earth. So I've lost a lot of that. That's kind of what fishing does for me. I, I deal with death a little bit. And, you know, this is a beautiful, beautiful animal here. But the circle of life is, you know, we have to eat, and fish is good for us. We're going to eat this fish. Thank you for sacrificing your life. We appreciate it. I mean, it's gonna go to good use. They're gonna, gonna, gonna to eat you up. Yes. I hope you're in heaven now. If you're not there by judgment day, I know you went the other way. <laughs> <laughs> I give the angel back their wings. Indian shot no spearfish. Indian shot no spearfish. A nice fillet out of that guy. So Captain Kenny caught these squid fresh, and so I'm gonna whip up some fried calamari, Italian style. My father's recipe should be fun. Not very fun. Not very fun cleaning them. Spearfish, huh? Oh yeah. So sea salt. Sea salt the answer, buddy. Everybody. Here we have the grill. We're gonna put some fish on. Looks like he put some wood. Oh, it's uh, Kiabe. Tell you after a day of fishing, I'm starving. You gotta cook them so they're golden brown like that. Not too long. You don't want to overcook them, or they turn they become like taste like rubber. This is it. <laughs> now Hawaiian would say, "No cut away, the best." Mm. Right on. Are you sit? And now you don't. <laughs> Waiting for the fish, and we're going to have fish and rice, and then our, and our impromptu barbecue is going to be complete. Here is the grilled short-nosed spearfish that we caught today. Grilled up. Um, it's great. We've got the mesquite. Mm. That's fantastic. That's really good. Mm -hmm. really good taste, huh? That's amazing. No problem. <laughs> it's the best. Plate, we have some beautiful rice, a salad, and the spearfish with the grape and pepper salsa. There's something to eat, right, Captain? I hope so. Yeah. 